just a couple of short, short remarks because it's almost like the state of InfoAge. And if you ever want to see some place that's been in a state of flux over the past couple of years, it's this place. Uh, in 2012, the last time we had the, uh, uh, the reception, we were just beginning to roll. We actually had a budget. Okay, now for us working for years with we don't know how many buildings we have or what we have, it was unbelievable because we finally, finally figured out what the cost of running this place was with regard to electricity. It was about $3,500 a month. And that was because of this place was an industrial complex for all intents and purposes. So they had industrial transformers here. So we're still trying to get our hands around that, but we've dropped that a bit. But the biggest thing that happened was uh, Sandy clobbered us. Needless to say, and basically put us out of business from November 1912 till August 1913. Uh, when it hit, it hit us hard. For almost four months, we had no electricity at all. Uh, for about a couple of months after that, we had a one and a half uh, KW generator that was powering up just a couple of buildings, just or a couple of rooms, when we held meetings here. And then George Newberry, thank you, George, uh, came in with a great big generator. As, well, it wasn't quite as big as this room, but it almost looked as big as this room, and it probably drank as much gasoline and diesel as this room would if we had to do something like that. We had a $21,000 fuel bill by the time we finally got rid of it. Uh, and then right after that, Wall Township came through with a $40,000 transformer. So we've had, uh, we've actually, I think, come out of this a little bit stronger than we were before we walked into it. And, for example, I, I mentioned the $40,000 transformer. That was money we didn't have. In capital improvements over the past year, we have had roofs replaced in the H buildings, and many of you know what they were. Uh, thanks to Wall, FEMA, and insurance, over $275,000 has been spent just replacing the roofs here. Monmouth County Long-Term Recovery Group is going to use this as their base of operations. Uh, they have rented rooms upstairs. They're going to have any place from 50 to 150 volunteers here for the next two to three years working in building 9010D, which is if you walk in the gate, it's the first building that you see. And we like this because they're paying us rent and they also spent $300,000 refurbishing 9010D and also putting HVAC into 9010C. That was a good thing. <laughs> and the Ocean County Long-Term Recovery Group gave us 25 grand to replace a roof for years free rent. Well, that's about over, so we're going to start collecting money from them, and we're very happy to do that. And in events, too, another thing, uh, Camp Evans, a base of terror, you're going to see an advertisement in the program we gave to you, uh, is turning out to be one of the scariest haunts in the state of New Jersey for uh, Halloween. And uh, we have, we, <laughs> I'm not going to mention what one of our standards is to, uh, let's say when people come through here, we hope that one of them has a hard time that they have to wear something around the front of them as they walk out because we literally scare them. And last year we drew about 4,000 people for that event alone. Uh, this year we have right now, just on Groupon alone, we're up to about 250. We haven't even started anything yet. Last night we actually spent up till 2 o'clock this morning getting a, a video ready for Facebook. And it's exceptional. It truly is. Wait till we get it out. We're going to put it out on the web and Facebook. And then f we have 1,500 people for the holiday in the, uh, the train show we had here. So, I mean, these are, these are big numbers for us. And as time's going on, we're getting bigger and bigger. We had the Vintage Computer Fest and the Shipwreck Symposium. Drew great crowds. And then on June 30th, we had probably one of the greatest things we've had and an opportunity that literally only came along once in a lifetime. We had Princess, Elettra, Marconi, Giovanelli. It was Guillermo Marconi's daughter, his sole surviving child. She was 84 years old, and she visited here on June 30th as part of a North American tour, 101 years to the day that her father was at Camp Evans, at that time the Marconi Complex. So that was just, and I want to tell you, for some of us who were there at the time, and there was a bunch of people around here that, that, that were able to make it, she had tears in her eyes when she found out the way they were trying to preserve her father's legacy. And she never knew that this place existed. It's like many other people never knew this place existed. But it was a wonderful day, and I'll tell you, she's just remembered it, and we expect to have her back sometime soon. And then many of you know the Tyros dish. You know that big, ugly thing that was down the road here that hadn't moved in 40 years? It's moving. It is literally moving on azimuth and elevation. It's motorized. Uh, 
this uh, we expect within the next six months to be uh, within the next two or three months we're going to be putting the electronics in to be able to reach out to outer space we're in a collaboration with Princeton University. Princeton's been working with us for the past two years on this, and they've sunk over $40,000 plus I don't know how many hundreds, if not thousands of man hours getting this up, working with our people, our volunteers here, the folks from the Ocean Mammoth Amateur Radio Club, and we expect that Bob Giordano is the, uh, the guru behind our strategic pavilion and our, our pavilions in our strategic plan to be one of our first pavilions. Our space and satellite pavilion should be down here hopefully within about another year. One of the things we are doing right now, and someone mentioned to me before about grants, uh, we're reaching out right now. I guess we're actively seeking grants and academic partnerships to support what we do here. Uh, to do the work of Tyros, Princeton University, the Ocean Mammoth Antique Radio Club, and InfoAge are partnering for a National Science Foundation Grant, what is it, Beth, uh, 4.2? About 4.2 million. And we think we're going to have a good shot at getting our portion of that simply because Princeton is the lead on it. See, Princeton loves us because all they have is a six-foot antenna. <laughs> and we got, we got something that's ten times bigger down there. You know, so, I mean, for, for them and their astrophysics department, it, it's a godsend. So that's why we're able to do so well with them on that. Beth is working uh, with the Smithsonian Institute to foster a loan, lending school partnership while investigating grants for the uh, National Endowments for the Humanities. We also have the smaller grants uh, that we're working with the state of New Jersey, but getting together, partnering with uh, places like Smithsonian helps reshape our public relations and gives us an opportunity to reach out further. We have an educational outreach going right now um, with Monmouth University Department of History. We're working with Farley Dickinson University, uh, Union County College, uh, and also we have stuff going with the Monmouth County Library and most of the schools that are in this area, the high schools. And we're getting new volunteers all the time. And the greatest part about it, they're young. <laughs> I want to tell you, <laughs> believe me, they're young. They got good legs, young legs. They can run around. They can do a lot of things that we can't do anymore. But the continued restoration, the renovation, and even the triage, you know, we need your continued support, you know, both now and in the years ahead. And whether a corporate or individual membership, a donation, uh, a gift of unused exhibits. And I'm going to tell you, this is one of the reasons we're actually honoring Khaki tonight. And you'll hear that in a little bit. Ed Thomas is going, what? We gave you something that I don't know about? It? Don't worry, Ed. It was before your time. <laughs> uh, all help us to restoring this National Historic Landmark. And again, we are a landmark status right now. No longer a National Historic Site. Welcome to InfoAge. Thank you for your continued support both pre past, present, and in the future. And let's see. Thank you very much.